Dušan Uštević, Portal Telegraf. Imam pitanje za selektora iz... The gentleman is from Portal Telegraf. I have the question for the head coach and Strahinja. The head coach, you have announced that you're going to attack with two strikers. Do you think it's time to correct this approach? Because... I would say that it works better for them if uh, the other team attacks them. And the question for Strahinja is that before the match, we've seen that Novak Djokovic has uh, spoken to you through video link. What uh, did he tell you? Did he advise you anything important uh, ahead of the match against Denmark? Well, in general, we do think about all the possible elements of our lineup, and tomorrow we will see about the starting lineup and how we are going to attack with one or two strikers. That is the option one. The option two, and uh, what we know is that we're going to try to play as intelligently as we can. That is basically what we know right now. Hello, everyone. Well, frankly, I haven't had uh, the chance to speak to Novak Djokovic, but if he has given us support, uh, that's how I understood you, that means a lot, because uh, Nole is the greatest tennis player of all times, and that means a lot to us. One question only, be respective towards your colleagues. Yeah, we continue on that side. Milutin Vujic, Portal Mondo. Portal Mondo, uh, the head coach, this morning you had a training and you seemed all in good mood. Before that uh, training, you went to Lazar Samarjic. Can you tell us what did you whisper to his ear? Well, we are in a good mood. Why would not be in a good mood? Tomorrow is a great football festival. There is a great match ahead of us. I think that we should all be very positive when it comes to that. And to Lazar Samarcic, I s asked him, can he play tomorrow? I was joking. Basically, that was it. Is he ready to play tomorrow? In that kind of context, I addressed the whispering question. What did he say? He said he is not ready. How do you mean he's not ready? He's basically hardly waiting to fly into the Here pitch. in the middle, just wait for the microphone, please. Stojkovic, you have played against Denmark three times and you have lost all the three games. What is your focus, what is your focus for, for, for the game tomorrow? Uh, first of all, we, 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 we knew that uh, England was an important game, Slovenia also, but uh, now is the most important game for us is the Denmark. So I'm very pleased to have a game at a, to have a kickoff at 9 p.m. It's a really the best condition for, for the game. From other side, Denmark is a really strong side, and uh, they have uh, excellent players. They play very tough. They don't win, but also they don't lose in two games. So it means that they're a really organized team who run a lot, who sacrifice a lot on the pitch. But it, this is uh, the game face to face, you know, and uh, it's going to be. It's going to be very hard to play, but we believe that uh, we can change this history. As you said, three times we lost, and so now it's time to, to change a little bit this history. And we will do our best, of course, to, to make a good game and uh, to try to, to find a way to put, uh, to put a ball on the net. We'll move to the left side. 
Vladimir Tomković Informer, pitanje za selektora. Selektor je posle ovih 20 kusur dana... Mr. Tomković from Informer, head coach, for those more than 20 days since you've been together with the players, if you can choose one individual in terms of the dedication, uh, the fight, uh, everything that uh, that person could bring in, what do you think would be the hero of our team? Well, I don't know, I see our players as part of one single team. And in the last couple of years, we do push for this behavior and thinking. And that is the belief that it's the team that loses or wins. So it's not fair to talk about the individuals. And I would like to refrain and would not like to give you any sort of exact response or answer when it comes to this. I think that we seem very well organized we are a team and I believe that every single player gives his own contribution to the team and to me that is an important element there is no individualism there is no uh, need for self-realization but we have all been concentrating on the uh, fact that the team was always and will remain the most important part of our game. And when it comes to the satisfaction with their behavior, I can say that we have been since 28th of May together. I think we are for 25 days together, if I can calculate correctly. But they've really had great behavior. And uh, I'm, I'm really surprised that sometimes they don't argue with each other because they've been for such a long time together in the same area, in the same space, but that's not happening. They're very nice, very well behaved. I don't have any objections when it comes to the behavior on the pitch, during the trainings, in the hotel, and in conducting all of their applications. And that's something that is really great. Maybe someone would like to spoil that. Maybe someone is going to try to influence this harmony and unity, but uh, we are not going to give this in. We're not going to let us in. Yes, um, <coughs> Christian from uh, Danish media. It's a question for you, Pavlovic. Um, you play in uh, Red Bull Salzburg together with Maurits Kergo and Mas Bistrup, uh, both Danish players. Have you spoken to them about uh, this game before the Euros? Yeah, we, we spoke about the game. And um, yeah, uh, they said that uh, we can win that game. So, yeah. That's all what they say. Go ahead. Bojan Marinkovic, Portal, Selector, Mr. Marinkovic from Portal against England and Slovenia. Serbia had a very mild start. Let's say that for the first 30 minutes, it happened the same in both matches. What has to be done for this not to repeat in the next match against Denmark? And let's say that we don't start playing for real since the 46th minute. That is a good conclusion, I would say. That is one of the issues that we are working on. And uh, that's something that we want to improve or correct. And we do spend lots of time talking about that. Also, training in the pitch. And we have multiple meetings uh, considering that. We are not going to let the advantage to the opponent in those 45 minutes. That's something that we've had in Austria and Sweden before this. So that's yeah how we started. But once we grasp the game and we have full control of the ball, then things change drastically. We're going to try to improve those things as much as we can. So it is possible to face strong pressure from the opponent, maybe some sort of psychological preparation that can improve our start is needed. But this is something that we keep in mind. We do lots of analysis, video analysis. We do converse a lot about what happened. So those two matches we have played in a very good manner. And uh, we've done very well against the English and Slovenian teams. And I hope that the third match is going to be the same in uh, terms of the efficiency. Uh, but at the end, I hope that we are going to be the ones that are going to be happier than the opponent. Mario Maric, Portal Telegraph. How many subs? 
changes can we expect in our team in comparison to the team that played against Slovenia. And uh, well, we're going to have the team that is going to play tomorrow. I haven't really uh, said anything more important than this before. Uh, what I wrote in my notes, because that was uh, another part of the question related to the notes that they saw taken down. And I said that there are going to be some changes. I'm not sure how many changes there are going to be. How different is this team is going to be in comparison to the one against Slovenia? Are there going to be two or three or four changes? Well, that means not much. There are going to be some changes nonetheless. But keep in mind, the match is not played for 45 minutes, it's played for 90 minutes. We have to think about the other period of the match. We need to think about who starts and who stays on the bench. And what can we do in order to bring the match into the stream that we want it to be? You need to have some sort of a gun in the bench that you can activate later. You cannot go into the pitch without having this reserve gun. So in this sense, you need to be very well calculated and intelligent to uh, bring in some moves or make some moves when it comes to the starting lineup, but also uh, when it comes to the ones that stay in the bench, because today, in today's football, the bench is so important. I mean, the players that stay in the bench and wait for their chances later during the matches even sometimes more so than the ones that started from the very beginning. This is something that has been proven so millions of times until now. So when it comes to that, there are, there's going to be some changes. There's, there are going to be changes for sure. But when it comes to the constellation uh, and when it comes to the makeup of uh, our team strategy, uh, the plan, uh, the approach, uh, everything, that's something that exists, of course, and depending on its elements, but also on the situations, we're going to play with uh, option A, option B, and so on. Branko Spasojevic Sport Club, head coach. Man, many are prone to believe that after tomorrow's match, there is going to be nothing. Nothing is going to be the same, not only for the Serbian national team, but for the Serbian football in general. What's going to be the final message, the last message that you will give to the Serbian public that uh, expects so much for the team to go further? What do you mean nothing is going to be the same? What do you mean after tomorrow's match, nothing is going to be the same in the Serbian football? What do you mean by that? Well, the future of this generation all, ah, that, okay. Well, we will for sure analyze, make all the analyses of the match. For sure, there's going to be lots of polemics. There's going to be opinions uh, going on one hand, on one side, on the other, but I don't want to be negative all the time. I don't like people who are overwhelmingly negative because no one can dispute the fact that the uh, players of Serbia are running their join their best, and they are uh, really give, given their maximum in order to get to the positive result. That cannot be doubted. But, of course, the Euro is a tournament of the best possible teams. That is a football that is played at very high levels. So tomorrow we are looking forward to a match of uh, a high importance, I would say the most important match in the group because that's the match that determines our future path in this tournament. I have to say that we I don't have the data. If we as Yugoslavia uh, because right now we are for the first time here as Serbia. For the first time after 24 years, Serbia plays in the Euro. We have had only one win against Norway, uh, and that was in 1991. So just one victory. We don't have 50. And uh, we should not... Uh, really try to underestimate those facts. Uh, we will give our best. Denmark has a very good team from Eriksen, Hoiberg, Christensen, Male, Male, and it's really a great team. And we should not really underestimate this, and we do not underestimate them. But we do believe at the same time, we believe that since we are here, we believe that we can play against Denmark. Final questions, here on the right.
Mr. Topalovic from Halo. Well, when Eriksen is, is in the starting lineup or when he's not in the starting lineup, would Denmark seem more dangerous? What is your opinion, head coach? Would you like him to be in the starting lineup or to stay on the bench? Well, Eriksen, for sure, it's one of the players that has marked an era in football in his career is a phenomenous one. And I'm really glad that after certain health issue he has had, he's with us, he's here, he's playing. I would like to see him in the bench because he's a very dangerous player. He's very intelligent. He knows what to do with the ball. And for sure, he has an attitude, and he also is very precise, he is very exact, and he has a very powerful shot, and that can be really dangerous for any goalkeeper. And if he's going to play, if he's going to start from the very beginning, we have to take good care of him. Of course, our players, they do have... Uh, the uh, formations that should respond to uh, Denmark's uh, team, but for sure we should keep away from the uh, penalty area and we are going to try to keep him away from the opportunity to shoot directly into the goal. So we're going to have to be very, very careful when it comes uh, to that player. Uh, he's a very top quality player. You will probably be up against Rasmus Højlund tomorrow. Have you noticed that he has not been scoring in his uh, last six matches for Denmark and how have you prepared to meet him? <clears throat> to be honest, I didn't notice that. Uh, I think that he is a really good player. I know him back then when he played in, uh, in Stuttgart. And uh, yeah, he's, he, he can be really dangerous, so we need to pay attention to him and uh, yeah, to play a really physical game against him. So yeah, he's a good, good, good striker. Elvin, we'll end here. Uh, Stefan Smudja, BDO2 Sport, question uh, for Strachinju. Strachinja, the head coach. I cannot see, over here. The head coach uh, said that you had some issues in the first half of the, of the match against Slovenia uh, due to the uh, very intense heat. Well, then we revived him, head coach is saying. He's alive, kicking. So how do you feel? Well, everything is right right now. It's It's been really hard. It was really bad weather. And uh, so I didn't feel great at that moment. But that's it. Everything is right now. And uh, now I'm going to feel great and I'm ready for tomorrow's match. Because we have no journalists remotely connected with us. Yes. Yes, thank you. Uh, Danish media, Rasmus. Um, this is a question for uh, Dragan Stojkovic. Um, the national team of Denmark, Kasper Juhlmann, emphasized your physique, the physique you can bring to the game. Uh, should Denmark fear the, the physical part of the game you can bring? If I understood well, you asked me about the physical condition, right? Denmark should fear your physique in the team. Physique. Physique. Look, Denmark from the history is a really strong country and you have a really strong boys always regarding all sports and football especially. So it's a really good representative of Scandinavia and uh, you are always at the top in football. Even we back home from Qatar together, right? Serbia and Denmark, right? In Qatar. We went back home after three games. But, but uh, I have a lot of respect for, for Danish football. Coach is a really great guy, the players also. And uh, from the physical part, it's going to be a really good challenge for us to, to be on the same level. This is something very important uh, in the modern football and especially when you play with a team who is uh, physically really good. But it's not only 
physical part who is important. Technically, you are very good. You are a very good team. Technically, you have a, a really great play, players on the, on, the, on the field. So, we, after Slovenia game, we had, uh, we had one day off, okay? The players spend time with the families. Then after we work on the really good schedule, and uh, I hope my players will be ready. Not I hope, I strongly believe that they will be ready for 9 p.m. tomorrow to have a really good, good game. And I hope that everybody who come to, to the stadium will enjoy play from both sides. Thank you. Thank you all. Just a reminder, Danish press conference at 7.15, training session at 8 p.m. For Danish press, if you're here for the first time, you just use doors on the left, pitch side access is really close. And of course tomorrow, Media Hub opens at 4 p.m.